I think that was the quickest we've ever pulled that off. Yeah, I mean, it took a few seconds to come out on Facebook and come out on YouTube. Normally, it takes a little bit longer than that. Hello. 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 Oh, going to sound very serious hello. and hello. purposeful now. Um, hello again, everybody. It's um, it's WP Builds Weekly WordPress News yet again. I'm going to introduce this week's guests. They've all been on before, but nevertheless, we'll give them a chance to introduce themselves, give them the little elevator pitch moment and uh, and so on. I have over there... Oh, not it's me. That. Amateur, amateur. It's uh, it's Leo Mindel. Can I just ask Leo? Because I often want to call it, say, Mindel, but I'm sure it's Mindel. Uh, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I think I've given. I, I think. I think as long as you can get the Leo right, which yeah, actually <laughs> Leo the number right. of people that will turn to me and call me even after knowing me, Leon, Lee, Le whatever. <laughs> It, 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 there yeah. aren't many letters to get wrong, really. But then you go, uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Leo Mindel. Tell us who Sotic. you are. Uh, my name is Leo Mindel. Company is Sotic. We're a digital sports agency. So we deliver uh, websites on WordPress to governing bodies and federations around the world. Thank you so much. Some of us have got these elevator pitches down pat. I know that Paul does often, but then sometimes plays with it a bit. Tell us, tell us about yourself, Paul Lacey. I don't even have a name anymore. <laughs> it's got I'm you in the corner. Invisible, says... I'm an invisible person called Paul Lacey. Disappeared we'll talk about that in a minute. Temporarily. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I suppose I should say something official. Um, yeah, I'm the co-founder of the Dickie Bird Studio, which is a WordPress agency in the UK. Lovely. Uh, mm. Just interrupting Bernard just momentarily. Hello, Chris. Hello, Puneet. And um, hello, yeah. Sabrina, as well. Hello, hello, hello. Going to be seeing more of Sabrina tomorrow, as I will no doubt explain in a minute. Okay, and I have to. Oh, there, there, there. Not there's, bad. there's Bernard. Hello, Bernard. Tell us, <laughs> tell us all about yourself. No, not at all. But most of the people watching should should know by now. Uh, I'm a little very first company, and the other part is uh, helping out and doing stuff for pods. So that's basically it, yep. short and simple. Yep. Tell um, us about tell always... us about chocolate, though. Tell us about hot chocolate because that's an unknown side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, together with my brother, we are selling uh, Belgium hot chocolate in Austria to uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, and yes, they have started picking up the orders again. So um. finally, this weird COVID situation is at least in Austria uh, getting better. So. Yeah, but the last three months from 100% to zero, it was just nothing. Mm, yeah, it's funny as well because people people were still consuming things, weren't they? But I suppose they were just consuming things yeah, but, from their local uh, shop. Yeah, first, mm, about 98% of our customers uh, are hotels, restaurants, and stuff mm. like that, resellers. So all of them closed. And uh, the, they are reopened in close to a month now. So they now get, have to restock stuff that they have sold. Yes, yes, quite. But, yes. Uh, so you're poised because... to be, uh, to be a, a, a chocolate magnate once more. Um, thank you, all three of you, for introducing yourselves. I'm Nathan Wrigley. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Chris Hughes is expecting a chicken dog <laughs> animal update from Paul. Otherwise, it'll be disappointing. Are we going to be disappointed, Paul? Do we get that? Or I don't know, just but on? just as you said that, did you hear the dog barking? Yeah. No. <laughs> did no. you hear it? Ideal. Uh, Perfect. Just, literally, you said that, and then this, she's down here. Here's the dog. <laughs> Guess and number she five. Just barked at exactly the same yes. time you, you said that. I don't. I only have guinea pigs, guinea pigs and fish, right? But one day it would be nice if we all just held a pet throughout the entire show, just to see if we could do it. Uh, Mike Killen. Oh, okay. thank you, Mike. I don't know what you mean. Um, and Leo, Leo is saying hello, which is weird because it's he's there. Look. Um, okay, let's crack on. This is this is what we're doing today. We're here talking about WordPressy stuff. This is our website wpbuilds.com go check it out if you click on this link here you'll get to this subscribe page there's some newsletters to sign up to you know podcast players and all that jazz please join this one go click this button if you're not involved already i suspect you are but there's nearly 2600 very nice wordpress people in there now we 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 endeavor to keep it nice and polite 
That's the mantra. <laughs> and then if you go here, this link gets you to this news archive. Every week we publish a new bit of news, and this is the one we're going to be talking about today. And it looks like this. It's got wasps on the front. And so, yeah, we'll just be going through this line by line. And But before before we get into that, if you don't mind, I want to, I want to ask Paul Lacey a question, which is about what we were talking about just before we came uh, live on air, and maybe the others have got something to share about this. Paul, you're taking a you're taking a, a sort of holiday uh, sabbatical. Of, yeah, sabbatical. Tell us about this and why you're doing it. Uh, well, the main, basically, I just I turned off, I deactivated both my Facebook and my Twitter on Saturday. I mean, the the main reason is this this wonderful new car game that I've got on my Nintendo, <laughs> and it was just <laughs> I just really needed to unlock the new Corvette. <laughs> and there just wasn't enough time in and it's you know i just really need to get focused but then on a serious note i was playing that a lot on the weekend but yeah i, do, I have taken a, a one week sabbatical from twitter and facebook and I've, i don't like anyone who's my close friends knows that i'm really having a, a constant battle with facebook and where i sit with facebook and i jump in and out of facebook groups i leave loads of facebook groups and i come back into them then i leave them all again and then i offend some people sometimes because because <laughs> i left their facebook group or something or and so you know what? i was just thinking you know, i really need a week uh because social media is a big part of everyone's life i really need it just one week just to literally turn it off and think okay where does social media sit for my business and me where does it sit with my friends, uh, as in you know, you guys, and and then where does it sit for the rest of the world that's going on? Yeah, and and so I just it wasn't like a major thing. I just um, I just thought I don't think I can actually have that that personal thought space. Yeah, to myself with all yeah. the busy stuff that I've got going on in in work and business and stuff like that, without just actually making a little point to turn it all off, and. Um, it was like I was saying, a couple of people messaged me to see if I was all right. I'm absolutely fine. Uh, thank you for those people. But I equally didn't want to make a big kind of song and dance announcement about it. Like, hey, everybody, I'm better than all of you. I'm turning my social media off because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm above all that stuff. It was more just yeah. like social media confuses the hell out of me at the moment. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got all these platforms and there's all this kind of, misinformation and neat and you know reactions to it doesn't matter what the story is in the press like something happens everyone's so on edge right now i just thought i could just do with a week off so i just yeah. deactivated it and i thought and i wonder was, what happened yeah yeah i didn't realize you could do that i didn't realize you could deactivate mm. your twitter account and it, it it will stay intact for 30 days and then you can just days. press a button mm. and it comes back as was right? and it will come back as exactly as it was before Facebook. The so same? I'm gonna I'm gonna stay off until yeah. I don't know about Facebook. What the time frame is on Facebook? I think with Facebook you can probably turn it off for as long as you want. Um, but yeah, with Twitter, it's thirty have you days. Back, Paul. I'll gladly they serve will. you those ads yeah. as soon as you yeah, exactly. uh, as soon as you turn <laughs> it back on again. Now that's really interesting though. Yeah, I've had a that's... I've had really a mixed mixed bag with social media during this whole lockdown thing. That is to say, I have found myself at periods really like a ship without a rudder, a really like directionless, sitting sitting in the exact same spot thinking, this is where I do my work, why aren't I doing any work? And then kind of figuring like two hours has gone have gone by and I all I have done is social media. <laughs> and that and, and it, then you feel lousy just thinking, what have I just done for two hours? I've literally gone. Do you uh, Nathan, yeah. Nathan, do you have all your notifications turned on? Yeah, so, I actually did that about this time last year because of Paul. Paul said mm -hmm. switch them all off. But I tell you, it's a right old faff off. switching them off, isn't it? You've got to go into each group one at a time and sort of switch them off. Um, but I have done that, yeah. And I left a load of Facebook groups, but somehow over the last, yeah. I don't know, eight months or something, I've been slowly try, creeping back try, in. Right? Try starting to do, try turning off your notifications. Yeah. The two things I do is I've turned all my notifications off and I will never take my not never but i don't take my phone upstairs interesting so i never take i don't do you live in a bungalow my, no but i don't <laughs> take my phone the point is I, when i go go upstairs to bed i don't take yeah. the phone now that's a really good idea i had a chat um, with mike killen who was listening a minute ago uh, oh probably mm -hmm. about eight months or so ago and he was saying that he puts his he puts it out of reach in i mean it's up goes upstairs but it's like right. it's, you know it's physically you have to get yourself out of bed it's in another room yeah I, i've had i've heard mike talk about that 
Yeah, right? um, mine is mine is downstairs, and once you get used to not taking it upstairs, yeah. Um, as mine is ringing right now, um, yep. it 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 makes a big difference. <laughs> I think it, does, yeah. it makes a big difference. But anyway. Well, That's I applaud it. you, uh, Paul. I think it's a really good idea. I'm going to. Oh, yeah, I've, and... I've had everyone I, I in it's... my. Um, everyone's blocked, not blocked, unfollowed. Every single group, every single friend I have on Facebook has been unfollowed for at least a year, like Nathan was saying. So when I actually go to Facebook on a you know on a daily basis, it says "Welcome to Facebook. Here's how to get started." Yeah. And because I've got an ad blocker as well, there's not even any. Uh, ads in there but the craziest thing was when i actually did that the first time um i blocked uh, un unfollowed everybody and the and i didn't have an ad blocker on and facebook was empty apart from adverts for mental health and it was almost as if <laughs> it was part of the algorithm that was almost saying clearly yeah. you're having a breakdown of some sort um here's an advert for some mental health support it's like that's oh interesting God. yeah it's anyway um, well, i mean yeah. As Paul told me before, my answer broke. Oh, I didn't recognize that. Um, in, in, in the conclusion, what does that say about my social media usage? Because, I mean, if you just open, open Facebook up if I have time, or sometimes, yeah, you know, you can easily lose, lose one hour there. But I have uh, not, no notifications, nothing, and not conflict because I, I just don't get notifications. I have no, don't use the Facebook app on my phone. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. it's just. If I have time, I go on Facebook, check stuff. I have a Twitter account, and yeah, I go there if I need something or if I've, I don't know if you have to retweet something, maybe. But that's it. Uh, I rarely post on my profile itself because I don't know. It's 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 like uh, no idea what's going on. So it's just. But yeah, if you go on, then you can lose huge amounts of time. Yeah. I think especially at the minute when everybody's kind of, you know, there's quite a lot of soul searching and trying to reconnect. Yeah, with but it, it seems like I'm reacting mostly to WordPress stuff, so I don't get much else. Yeah. Oh, that's so okay then. It, it, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so Facebook sort of recognized, okay, uh, he, he isn't interested in the rest. Uh, besides maybe uh, Black, Black Lives Matter and stuff around that and discussions if it's a good thing or a bad thing or why or whatever i'd, uh, I'd be really interested to know WordPress. sorry i was just gonna say i'd be really interested to know if, if if wordpress's algorithm could sum each of us up in just one word i wonder <laughs> wonder what that word would be because it's probably got a far far greater <laughs> insight into what we're like what we're actually like because of yeah, the things we actually that's... look for no, than even I our closest think... relatives <laughs> the thing is it's this classic filter bubble and you don't yeah. get stuff, and then you only can like stuff which you get presented, but you might like other stuff which isn't presented to you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, interesting. And the more I use Facebook, the more I hate the way it all together works because, oh, yeah, I accidentally moved the way, oh, my feed starts from fresh. Where have I been? Did I miss something? I don't know. So it's, 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 it's powerful stuff, it's, isn't it? Powerful yep. stuff. A great comment here from Sabrina. Look at this. This is great. If we do an animal episode, we should have Jan on because <laughs> he's got a horse. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Doing an episode with a guy on a horse. That would make my week. Um, by the way, if you want to make comments, now let me just make sure I can do this. If you want to make comments, please go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live. That's logged into Google or wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook. And then click on the StreamYard link to enable us to see who you are. That would be great. Right. We should probably get on with this, shouldn't we? Let me put my screen back on. Okay, here we are. So WP stuff coming your way. WordPress 5.4.2 came out this week. Basically, not a lot of not a lot to talk about except there were 23 uh, sort of fixes many of which were security related. And then the second link, this one here, was all about what they were. Unless anybody has a deep interest in talking about this new release, I will just pass it by if that's all right. I'm gonna Not a wait deep for interest, half a second. Okay. One comment, uh, it's the same with POTS, please update, we had a security release last week, I think. Uh, and I'm sure if the details are already disclosed because other plugins might be affected too. So if you're using pods, we did even backport to all the versions, the fix for people who don't update to the most recent version. And 
it can be abused in, in a very creative way and it's fairly easy to do if you know how. So please update, it's very important. Okay, thank you. So what's the what's the the, the most up-to-date version of pods we should be on the lookout for? Uh, I need to 2.7.20.1. That's a really easy scheme to remember, isn't it? 2.7.20.1. Wow. Okay. Um, but yeah, go and go and get yourself sorted out. And if, if you are interested, go and look at this WordFence article because it encapsulates it really well. This was the next piece, though, on the WordPress Tavern. This is the duo of Matt Mullenweg and Matthias Ventura. Um, who did their WordCamp Europe talk. You can click here. It's one hour and three minutes. But um, thankfully, Sarah Gooding has obviously gone through this video and picked out the bits of interest because she says basically started at the eight minute mark and go for about 10 minutes because that's where the stuff that most of us would be interested in is. And I thought this was really interesting because there was some lovely stuff coming into Gutenberg about inline image editing. If you watch the video, Matthias dumps an image on, I can't remember what it was, but now inside Gutenberg, you can rotate it, you can uh, and zoom in, zoom out, you can sort of, dis you know, once you've zoomed in, you can then move it so that it's got focus in the most appropriate place. So I thought that was really nice. And there was a couple of other things as well. Did I know Leo watched it, but I don't know if um, Bernard or Paul got a chance to see it, but that was my that was my hot bit from that. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, yeah, go go, go Bernard. You go. Uh, it's interesting. I just wondered. Uh, I mean, that that's a close call. How much of that should really be part of core? I don't know. I have no opinion on that. It just came to my mind with all the stuff that goes into Gutenberg and stuff. Back then, always no, that's not for core. That's plugin territory. And with Gutenberg, it seems almost everything goes into Gutenberg. So I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, on the one hand, it's a good thing. On the other hand, uh, there are editors loaded up in the way you need it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, Matt Mullenweg made the point. The and oh, sorry, I was just going to say, Matt Mullenweg actually made the point that he thought it was really, he, he likes that feature. It seems that he w wasn't aware of of all of the things that it could do, which is quite interesting. And um, and so as Matthias was pointing the things out, he saw, oh, that's that's nice, you know, kind of thing. And then, um, and he was saying, this will be so helpful to the people who, you know, have always had to find some kind of online solution. You know, they've gone and browsed to a external website, some half-baked, um, I don't know, image editing piece of software or something like that. Whereas really the basic stuff that they're hoping to cope with inside Gutenberg, it's not trying to do anything flashy. It's just moving, cropping. That's about it. And I think it's great. Yeah. I think it'll be really useful. Did you read it? Because I think it creates a rendered image. So if you play around a lot with it, yeah. you... I mean, all sorts of issues arise with, with solutions like that, uh, working in the browser, saving on the server. I, I think you, you've got some points there, Bernard. But however, I would say that you need to test and try these things out to see. And this is yeah. a good use case. Um, I would see something like Adobe coming out with a plugin eventually to say, well, this is their premium way of doing things rather than you mm. doing something else. Um, or the ability for you to use cloud-based uh, libraries and to bring in cloud-based libraries straight in. So, for example, um, Getty Images may come out with something so you could actually literally put their images in and then reutilize re them. Funny enough, this does feel very similar to things that, that I've used. I'm sure a lot of you use things like uh, Canva or uh, Relay That, which enable you to yeah. do inline editing of images yep. um, and uh, make things look far more professional than they did before. However, and I think Chris has got a very valid point, it's all about <laughs> yeah. um, what what ends up being that image name and how that comes out long term. Right. I think we have to be careful here. We're, see we're seeing a use case for Gutenberg. We're not saying this is the only thing you can use it for. We're saying this is a, this is these are the tools that you can now enable when you start moving away from stuffing everything on a page and not doing anything and breaking things into blocks. The minute you start breaking breaking yep. elements and concepts into blocks, you can do things that you weren't able to do when you were dealing with a whole page of content. And that's the key bit. And it, maybe it's a good example. Maybe it's a bad example. But let's see how it works. 
There was another nice feature which was mentioned as well, which is the ability to sort of cut and paste blocks. Because at the moment, um, it's quite difficult to move things unless you are literally moving them up or down. <laughs> um, if you've ever tried, put, like I've got multiple columns on some various posts and things like that. And once you've got the multiple columns set up, you can't just move it from one column into the other like you would expect on a page builder, like, I don't know, Beaver Builder or something. You have to kind of replicate it and then create a new block and then paste what was in it over there and then delete the original one. And that's all changing. So you'll be able to cut and paste um, and also drag as well. So that'll be a that'll make it much more page buildery, which is which is I think a, an aspiration, which is quite nice. Can I just wrap two stories together, Nathan? Mm -hmm. um, I know going off slightly off course, you've got um, a story a bit further down about an example of inline uh, contributing using mm. blocks. Uh, I don't know if you can bring that up or not. Which one? Which one? Um, it's in your next section. Um, it's like sorry. AS something. Oh, as blocks. Uh, as, as blocks. blocks yeah. This one. Yes. Yes. And, yes. And, and, and this, to me, is an absolutely killer example of why we should be moving to blocks and why that there is opportunities that we never thought about. I was this is very really, impressed with really this. Let me put it on the good. screen because it's worth looking at. Um, can I just preface what this is quickly? Yeah, please. So Asblocks is a project now, for, forgive me. Yeah, here we go. Um, I'm going to probably pronounce this wrong. It's Riyad Benguela. And he's decided that essentially the Gutenberg editor ought to have the capability, rather like Google Docs, of being synchronously edited by two or more people. And so this video demonstrates it in progress. So he writes in, a, in the block editor, he writes a title and then adds an image and a list and then... Then he clicks on a link and he gets a shareable link, which is either viewable or editable. So again, very similar feature to um, Google Docs. And he pastes that into an incognito window and off you go. You can see the two things working in, in tandem. And it's like, yes, yes, I want, oh, <laughs> there's the dog again. Um, I want this so badly. And I know a ton of yeah. people who need this because right now they're using Google Docs as the only decent system to collaboratively edit. And then they're having to strip out all the markup and everything when they finally paste so it. So do over. we think there will be a plugin from Google themselves for Google Docs so you can mm -hmm. actually embed Google Docs into pages as blocks? There's a... I don't know, actually. That's an interesting point. There is a software as a service thing called Wordable. It's at wordable.io, and then you link it up to your WordPress install, and then you click a button, uh, and it downloads all your Google Docs, and then you basically make a post out of one of them, and it and it tries to get the headings and everything right. Yeah, that would be clever on behalf of Google Docs, wouldn't it? Although it would be eating their lunch a little bit. Well, these things have to mm. evolve. Mm. Yeah. Well, go on. Bernard's got a view. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's difficult. I haven't made my mind up about all that stuff that's going on with Gutenberg because currently it's, it's messy. It's, it's, we have so much many, so many directions this could go because you have later done the, the article about generate blocks and uh, this block and that. And it's, it's, I think I said it the last time or was it somewhere different? It's like the Wild West out there yep. because you don't know what will emerge, what will stay uh, coming from pods. Uh, I have said already, it's it's the way Gutenberg stores stuff is, well, it's just a big blob of the content and yeah. uh, everything is done with those HTML comments. It's it's it, it's neat on the one hand, on the other hand, it, it feels a little bit, I don't know. So it's, it's, it's still in the early stages and I, I have customers which are, are anywhere near very happy with Gutenberg, and I have heard from others they just love it. So it's 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's okay. funny. I personally, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm too used to either have the the classic editor or a Beaver Builder, because currently Gutenberg is neither of that. <laughs> yeah. I just think that for a for a modern it interface, the expectation now, like who would go back to Microsoft Word and, and its capability to save on your desktop and then you have to email it and all of that? That's just not real. But yet we're still basically stuck with that, aren't we? Somebody's in the post, right? Sorry, okay, I'll back out. You go in, now you can edit it. Tell me when you're yeah. finished and I'll log in. That's just 
nonsense, isn't it? Because we now know yeah, what it, things like yeah. Google Docs can do, right? So, so take that. I was, I was saying this to Nathan before. If you take that back further that I remember, and uh, I'm sure some of you will remember, hmm. is when Microsoft came out with uh, Windows. Uh, at the time, everything was Microsoft DOS, and we moved over to Windows, um, Windows 3. Point whatever, and then it became where we, from there, we got Windows 95, which was the big change forward. But really, it didn't actually kick into a production level until we got to NT, which was an, which was about an eight-year cycle. And we are there with this. Game yeah. manufacturers at the time, everybody who were, who were creating games were like, no, 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 we don't want any of this stuff. We want to go straight <laughs> into the core. We want to go straight onto the hardware so that we can go, you know, you, you can't run your game under Windows, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you know, with DirectX and other things that they brought out, and if I've got the technologies wrong, somebody will correct me. <laughs> um, they produced a platform that enabled the games to work and they enabled this. And this is exactly where Gutenberg is. You're absolutely right, Bernard it's all squeezed into the wrong places or not into a neat place at the moment, but the concept will drive it and it will be, this is the way we've got to go forward. We've got to move off where we were doing, which is this sequential, a big slab of content and next to it is a theme which has got nothing to do with it. And it's not, you know, all of these things have got to come together so that we've got to change that approach and it won't be a straightforward process and it won't be there in five minutes. But it no, will be, and we'll, it, it is, and 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 lots of people are going to slate it off for this as it goes along. But everybody that was slating off our oh, Windows will be dead, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when it came out, it's like, yeah, but it will, it will, we will move this way. <laughs> hmm. I mean, Interesting. You're right because uh, looking at page builders like Elementor and stuff like that, there is a need for it, without yeah. any doubt, and it makes for sure publishing easier for people who want not just the text wall, but a neatly designed article. I'm totally on that and totally for it. Um, but it feels kind of odd because you know, we, no, we want this full page editing experience, yes, but we put it in the back end and then we uh, need separate style sheets for the back end and for the front end. And it's like, stuck in between like yeah we didn't want to really get rid of the classic editor because we left it in the admin uh yeah. but then we want front end and we want it to look good on the front end and even working on doing widgets and header and footer then why didn't you put it in front end from the start or mm -hmm. at least in a similar environment like uh, you have now uh, Beaver Builder with his assistant, like you have this plugin which on the side you can edit stuff and, 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 and do the metadata. Sometimes I wonder if they didn't go far enough. Oh, oh, I, I, think, a I, think, I think that's thing. always a that's always a question, and and sometimes you can't. Uh, you know, another example and analogy that those that know me know I use a car analogy. The beginning of when we started with cars. X number of years ago, <laughs> electric cars were a big thing. And we went through a process where we had trolley buses, which Nathan will remember from his youth, um, <laughs> pre, pre Paul's time. Uh, we uh -oh. had trolley buses, we had trams, we had all this, all this um, transport that was driven by electricity. And then we moved away to this thing because of the use of the combustion engine. And we're now reversing back to the fact that we need to use this again. So it, it is, it, but you can't jump from one. To, you can't jump that process from no, where no. we were to here. You needed the you needed the mass participation, which is what petrol engine gave us, to be able to then re-engineer it back again to how it should be. And I think that's exactly where we are with this. Is that nice. a big enough jump? No, I like it. Yeah, yeah. you're blowing it wide open there. That's, <laughs> that's that big jump. <laughs> so, what should we use for WordPress then? Petrol or don't know. electric? <laughs> the diesel know. version <laughs> or the. Oh, we'll talk that's about it I, on social I, media, but you're not there. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, <laughs> we're going to use the top. solar solar powered version of WordPress. What are we going to. We're going to. Why, why, why have we got to have a solution that's the end solution? There is no such thing as in this world that we work in as the end solution. We're just going to try these things. And if they work, we're going to go along with them. And if they don't work, we'll try something else. We can't. Sometimes it really frustrates me when people go like, oh, well, that's not going to, they haven't even tried it and they've said it's not going to work. Or they've they've deemed um, that the bit you learn out of trying it 
enables you to find a solution that will work better and better. We can't keep putting stuff on one page. We have to break this into blocks, not just because of websites. We've talked to you about this before, Nathan. We need to break it out so that you can put these blocks onto other environments like mobile apps, TV environments, other things that aren't websites. That's where the power will come in the future. And yeah. that's why yeah, we yeah. need these yeah. things. And the other thing is, especially in the WordPress system, is there isn't their use case. I mean, come on, we're using WordPress for things. Sometimes I think, sorry, do you need WordPress for that? And still it's yeah. used in so many ways, sometimes with success, sometimes not. Um, and yeah. sometimes by professionals and sometimes by pure beginners. I wonder sometimes how people have no idea of anything throw their sites together and they yeah. somehow kind of work. So um, that makes it difficult because what's the target group for? But we always talk about, yeah, you need to niche down and you get use cases and stuff like that. But WordPress itself, on what should the focus? Where is the area? Uh, so it's, 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 it's not easy. All the people, oh, we should do that. And then I think, oh, okay, yes, maybe. But then there is this and that. And and, and stuff like uh, structured data, like Leo just said, because that's the reason I can plug pots, uh, because then you can store it in separate fields or separate entities uh, and, and, and have more options to output it in different ways. But I will, then, um, when, when we finish this episode, I'll, I'll write a letter to Matt and I'll, I'll get it all sorted. <laughs> all right. I'll, is, it, to... is there any other? Are there any other ones of those world crises you can solve with one letter? Well, now I have penned several letters in the past. Um, I can just imagine, but you know, <laughs> let's see what comes of it. No, but it was right. I'm going to wrestle this back. Here we go. Matt Mullenweg and Matthias Ventura chatting about this stuff. Go and check that video from eight minutes for about ten minutes. That's the useful bit, and it's quite good. I think there's quite a lot of nice stuff coming, but the image stuff, particularly cool. Hey. Look at this. PHP is older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> who, would th who would have thought? I didn't honestly uh, think that there were like computers about when I was born, but it would seem. I mean, I'm only 24, and uh, PHP has been around for 25 years. This is just to say happy birthday to PHP. Interesting stuff, right? So there was a guy I didn't know about this person, Rasmus Lerndorf. He sat down 25 years ago on the 8th of June, and he came up with this personal homepage tools. And I confess I didn't even know that's what it stood for. Surely that's PHPT, but there you go, whatever. Um, and now, now it's powering. Check this. I mean, who knows where this statistic came from, presumably where that little one is. Look at that. Look at that little bit of writing. At the time of writing, 78.9% of all websites worldwide run on PHP, including the 37 0.2% of websites which which run on WordPress. All power to WordPress and PHP. There you go. Exciting? Mm. Probably not. Yep. Um, oh, I think it is. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. All right. Okay, there we go. That was it anyway. Uh, the next one, I'm just going to point this very generally because I don't want to dwell on it um, particularly. But this is a chap who I know from the, well, formerly WP and Op group, but is now Big Orange Heart. And he wrote a, a piece, it's Alex Junkovitz, and he wrote a piece on the 9th of June all about his, his mental health journey and what it means to work remotely. So really, I'm just flagging this for everybody's attention. If you have become a remote worker and you're kind of feeling, man alive, this in some respects is good for me. In other respects, I'm not really coping with this all that well. Alex, I think, has been through that journey on a you know, pr prior to this. And so there might be some nuggets of interest to you. And obviously at the bottom, we get a nice promo for a uh, big orange heart, which is very nice. So there you go. Um, the next bit, an on, go on. On, you had an episode right on, on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, yes, he did on the big orange heart podcast. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. An image of it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, cool. yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah nice definitely American. recommend listening to that one. That's mm, good. Yeah. One. It was really nice. I, but, I think uh, I'd also recommend putting out Chris's last comment as well. Oh, thank you. I didn't see. One second. Yep. I'm on the wrong screen. I would Chris write comments. Where? Comments. Last Do -do 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 -do. one. What? I'd it's agree. It's a Scarborough comment. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. I've got to read it first. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, I see. Right. Yeah. That's how it is, is it? 
I'm going to take myself off the screen. <laughs> 20 years of this. Imagine that. Imagine that Chris. at 24. That's right. <laughs> Chris is um, Chris is spending some time near where we live. He's in Yorkshire at the minute as well. He's not that far. And if we could, uh, if we would would have been able to go and see all the people, I'd have been hightailing it over to mm. to Harrogate to see him. But we're all still on a bit of a lockdown. So yeah, there we go. Thank I think, you. I think <laughs> what's in, very quickly on this, uh, what's very interesting for articles from people like Alex and others who have been doing this journey of working from home longer than maybe some of people have. Hmm. Um, there is becoming a pattern as to how to cope with this and you're going through cycles. And I think for a lot of people who have been forced into this cycle that they didn't think they were ever going to do working from home, they are finding it an interesting or they're finding it quite challenging, but hopefully they will find it uh, rewarding uh, yeah. and beneficial. I think as you know, you and I talked about earlier, Nathan, would I, you know, I, I'm due to reopen the office sometime in the near future. Uh, you know, we have an office in Cardiff uh, where normally there's 25 people. Um, it is questionable if we didn't have a lease, would we go back? Okay, let, let's get into this because I think this is a really a quick, interesting topic, right? Quick point. I, I No, let's develop that because I think that's a really interesting one, right? Because all the businesses who've got more than one employee are now going to be facing that, right? I mean, I work here. This is me just freelancing and so on. Paul's got an office. I presume Bernard has some sort of maybe office. I don't know. You can tell us in a minute. Looks like he's in there today. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering he's in a bit yeah. of a different location, isn't he's he? He's got a suit so on. And he's yeah, got, yeah, like, yes. Printer behind oh. him or something. He doesn't belong here. He's wearing a Normally suit. He's got like some cool <laughs> colours going just on. There. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to dismiss it. You're wearing a suit, Bernard. Get off the screen. It's, it's not. It's not appropriate. But, um, so, Leah, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? Are you going to go back to the office or not? Well, we are. We are. I'm actually visiting the office next week in Cardiff. Right. I'm up in Cardiff next week for the first time in what it feels like for ages. Um, and. It is a difficult question as to when and how we um, re move back in again and what that needs. And, you know, my wife who works in the NHS up until this point has not, she works on the administration side, has never had to wear a face mask. As of t today, they all have to wear a face mask. Hmm. Um, I don't want to sit there and go into that side. However, the whole thing of what this is going to mean, particularly for remote workers, uh, will be very interesting because some people will say they've been far more productive during this period of time. Other mm. people may say that they've been less than productive. And I don't think there's a straightforward answer as to whether which one is right or wrong. Um, I do think I am very much uh, not missing having to get on the tube every morning and right. waste waste an hour of my life every day or longer uh, commuting. Um, but, you know, you you you're missing some sort of connections that you don't have. So we, we, we shall see, we shall see um, when customers start asking for meetings, whether yeah. uh, people are responsive to that, those sort of requests. Yeah. I've got a few friends who n literally not, couldn't be further away from WordPress um, at all, but they quite a lot of them are closing their offices. They're just not renewing their leases. In one case, the person is selling the building they actually own the building and they're selling it um, because they just simply didn't know that they could work remotely. That there was no connection between remote work, computers, and what we do. Now there is, and they suddenly have realized, wow, that's a lot of money we've got sunk into that property. There was yeah, a, but, yeah bring sorry, it back. Bernard. Hmm. So to answer the first question, that's the home office of my brother. And um, the normally place, it's, it's my home office. So we don't have an office building or something like that because it's just me and him and my WordPress stuff is, is done remote if I need help. So that works just fine. To the issue itself, I think it will depend on, on, on the business, on the use case. I think it will end up to be a mixture for many companies because you need those kind of inform informational meetings or stuff right. happening or... Yeah. Uh, I have been in, working in an office too long ago, and you pick up stuff, like like if your if your your colleague is on the telephone and you you know what's going on by, for them. So if he's on vacation, if he gets sick, you kinda can pick up the slack because you know what he was doing. Hmm. If you're remote, many of that stuff goes away, or needs to be replaced, sort of. Or if you need help, you just can stand up, go to the next desk, ask, yeah. and you know if you can interrupt the person or if he's doing something where you shouldn't interrupt him. 
and all that can't be easily at yet at least done in a remote kind of situation i mean there are video chat tools and maybe cams and stuff like that so we will see how it works out but for sure many companies will more and more switch to that for example a big bank in in, in vienna they uh before corona already they uh, put all their offices more or less together and nobody had a desk anymore it was like you pick up your stuff choose a desk go away so they saved space because your desk isn't needed if you want vacation or in a meeting or whatever ah. so i think it it will get more and more like this mixed kind of I'm, stuff for bigger companies yeah. maybe but for smaller ones why pay for rent i don't know but there's a cost to it i think mm. yeah what are you doing with your office, Paul? Are you going to shut yours down or are you going to keep oh, I need, going? I need mine. I really, it's not an office with people going there, though. It's more or less just me most of the time and sometimes Peter as well. Uh, when when the rules relax, it will probably be me and Peter there quite a lot uh, for a number of reasons. Like, first of all, uh, this space that I'm working in isn't ideal. Even while we've been, you know, doing this live stream, um, I've had to hit mute and just ask um, my daughter if she could just... Um, Tell the tell the rest of the family to have the argument downstairs uh, <laughs> at the bottom of the house because that's why you've seen me with my half half ear on a few times because I can. You're, you're keeping abreast of what's going on in the office, aren't you? Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, yeah. Can, I can hear uh, you know my my five year old son having a tantrum about something, and I'm just and I let the, left the door open to this room. I was thinking, how can I get a message just to kindly calmly say, can can the door just be shut? Oh. And <laughs> thankfully, my daughter came up crawling you might have seen like a, a head you know and i was just <laughs> i did i did see them, that i thought it was quite you just tell them to close the door and um it's sometimes it's great working here in this room but other times if there's stuff going yeah. on it's almost impossible for me to not be uh involved in some way and yeah. um and that's and then if yeah. you lose your your momentum then you've got to wind that back up and it's been yeah. proven that that can take up to 30 minutes to get back exactly where you were in your train of thought so my office to me is just a place i can go and no one bothers me because i don't have that space in this house we've filled it with kids and animals and other stuff so <laughs> uh, but as for uh, peter so my business partner peter most of the time he's subcontracted to a major car um a car manufacturing company and he would be based in um London in the uh, in their offices and I did hear through Adrian who's also in our team who'd spoke to Peter uh, just just yesterday actually just saying that it sounds like he's not gonna have to go back to the offices to work every day in London for at least till next year so nice. that's great for us because we don't have to then hire a, a room a, you know like a, um, a room in a bed sit in London for when he's there uh, but it means that that's it's probably a, a rule that has been pushed across the uh, large portions of this gigantic, massive car company who we contract for. So um, mm -hmm. that's interesting. I haven't found out the full details about that, but it sounds like even the big blue chip companies are saying, you yeah. know what, we only need that person to come up to London yeah. once a week yeah. for the get together yeah. meeting. Can I, you know, can so I make a... Can I just make a suggestion if you've not used it as a tool that I find really, really useful for remote working or for team use, uh, which is Discord. Um, yeah, you've mentioned this to me before. Yeah, uh, like Discord. Really the the, the mm. audio quality on Discord, if you use the audio, the uh, uh, the voice channels, um, are just unbelievable. Uh, it's a it's a tool that the gamers use. It's it's Slack for gamers, um, yeah. and the and the Slack side the <laughs> The chat side is virtually the same, except for it's in black and white and different colors and all garish. But the audio quality of being able to drop in and out of conversations is unbelievable. It's a really, nice. really good tool. Discord, thank you. But wait a minute, hold the phone, right? Just hold the phone. Now, either this is a prank or it's true. It's binary. Is it your birthday? No. <sighs> it was my it was birthday. Fabulous. For um, WPLDN on Thursday, it was my birthday. I see. So Vito Peleg is being a nice, a, a gentleman, and saying Vito is being very nice. Day it, gone it was, by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I'm, it, I'm, it was, ca I'm catching you up, Nathan. Yeah, it <laughs> it was my birthday probably about a month ago, uh, Vito. So uh, feel free, you know, 
Just saying. Uh, <laughs> going to drop a message. Yeah, in. Yes. You, you, if if you as somebody is asking about, can you use video for Discord? Yes. Um, um, the person who's saying who that, that if you if you click on the little if you go to above the video, there's a Streamyard link in the description, and if you want to Alex, you can click that, Alex, yeah, Jonkovitz, uh, yeah. no, uh, Kalivo, okay, Kalinov, okay, Kalinov, Kalinov, yes. <laughs> so coming back to the discussion around uh, working remotely, I think the big question will be. Do people have an office at home? Can they have an office at home? Who pays for the so, office at home? That's a, that's a very uh, Bernard. I think you've hit the nail on the head of the question with, from where Paul is. When you buy a house, if you bought a house two years ago, you may that wasn't on your list of requirements. When people are <laughs> exactly. buying property coming going forward, I think they will be looking at the modelling of that property to include that space and children guards and whatever else that Paul needs to ensure that nobody can get up there. <laughs> or have a little happening. light bulb outside. That's it. The yeah, noise, yeah, yeah that's light bulb right. outside that says... The, the yeah, family the, feud barrier to the office. That's, that's, that's right, it. yeah. Forget, forget uh, the locks on the toilet. You need locks in your, in your room there. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, Alex, Don. It's also a money so, thing as well. You know, some, some organ companies now are making a preemptive move to say, we might need to save yeah. a lot of money. I mean, what I saw on the news on the weekend was that just in the UK, for instance, that usually the economy grows year by year by around one, anything from one to two percent, and that it shrunk by twenty percent hmm. um, in the in last month. few months. And yeah, in the last couple of months, so you know, okay. ten to twenty years has been undone, and that there is no no doubt. The shops are starting to open. What if nobody goes to them? You know, uh, they, they were queuing well, outside Primark, apparently. Primark, yeah. So they, they go back. They go back. They, they go back. Some people yeah. act as it hasn't been even there a shutdown because some restaurants, even if they're yeah. supposed to keep more distance, they are crowded. Yeah. yeah. So, it is interesting. that This is this is my fear as well, Paul. I share that fear in that I'm just concerned that the – it's always confidence, right? That the ability to spend money is based upon the confidence within the economy, and I'm, I'm just nervous that the confidence has been rocked so much that high ticket items, especially you know cars and holidays, especially okay. holidays. So are let's ask be about holidays. Have you booked a holiday yet? No. Have you got any holidays in the future booked? I live in yes. Scarborough. Yeah. What? Well, we have still one travel to Italy, which yeah. isn't cancelled in, in okay. September. So um, I have nice. I have booked my flights to to go snowboarding in January already. Have you? You are a you are you are a stalwart. The uh, the travel agents are better loving people like because you. people will they eventually. Um, and I'm trying to not make this so utopian the sort of th thoughts, but you know I am sure that during the beginning of uh, certain big things like wars, people bolt down. They hunker down but eventually you can't stay like that for forever and i think yeah. we're already going that we can't just keep doing this at infinitum and so we have to start doing these other things and that's that's the nature of human beings Here's so we will even in the worst environments we'll sit there and go right we need to be able to expand and, and start yeah and and the question bringing this back full circle into what we're talking about which is the environment we're in is we have seen an opportunity of what it's like to work from home and how it affects our companies and now we have an opportunity which we maybe have never would have had which is to evaluate that whether this is a good thing or a bad thing and i think that's what's going to happen and we're going to see if this is going to be the, the norms have been relaxed we don't have to sit there unlike bernard who has to wear a suit otherwise he's you know that's it i mean some I like of us, it, some, <laughs> of us <laughs> some of us have worked out how to get our hair cut shave just, all of those things i've just worked out what the perfect snapchat filter is it's the suit the suit you know you, you just turn it on and like you're I just you're know. in a t-shirt and this i'll tie I'll tell goes you in a second if, i'll tell you if, if snapchat has it or not it's got to be there. If it's well, not, that's perfect. The smart at one, office look. <laughs> one to the suit. I mean, I'm from Vienna, Austria. I, 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 I'm I, used to it. I, sometimes I like it. I mean, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, well, we I have to tie it this time, but I, if yeah. you look at my Facebook page, you see in the black tie or everything. I have them. I need them. I yes. like it sometimes. I know you've got that. Uh, you've got that side, haven't you? It's lovely. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're not. Of course, it's part, we're, we're not uh, really I, I think it says something about yourself if you dress up. At least I yeah. think a little bit. I agree. Um, the other thing is which which will help a home office is about how long you have to commute to work because. Mm. If you have your office nearby, it's not a, it's a no-brainer. I think but if you have to commute an hour or more, yep. I mean that's two hours saved a day for mm. whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you asked if there was a Snapchat filter. That is uh, the Snapchat. The, filter. Yeah, the the, wow. the problem is unless you're staring straight into the camera, it's all a bit wonky. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Wow, okay. that's, that's the, pretty that's good. The, that's the when that's you the when you lean back if you lean back a bit oh no it's just as no, that one i've just tried there's a couple there's one i don't know that oh. i don't know what that one does but there's a, a strange if one, i lean back one. on that one you said yeah, yeah that's really good don't move your arms that's the only that, <laughs> you know what if you were sort of slightly not paying attention that could cut it but it as looks soon like you... um <laughs> one of those um one of those mannequins where you what is yeah. it called you know where you have the hand in and you <laughs> uh, a puppet. Look how yeah, perfect. Puppet, where, where you, you know, you're saying, you're saying the words and you're making yeah, a puppet. The, the, yeah, the puppet. Oh, for what goodness sake. Honestly, Leo's got, Leo's got too many toys, hasn't uh, he? Snapchat. Got, that's, uh, that's Snapchat. Snapchat. But you've got to have, I think you've got to have special other software to make it come out. Uh, Snapcam is a plugin yeah. that you can get on, on most yeah, things. Yeah. I right. That's it. That's what we're all anyway, doing from now on. As soon as we hang up this, we're going to waste two hours. Facebook's so passe. <laughs> Now it's Snapchat filters, uh, and it's gone. Look, and now he just looks as ordinary as ever, as ordinary as uh, the rest as, they, of us. <laughs> as ordinary as ever. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Right, let's move on. Uh, let's get back very quickly. I'm just going to touch on these ever so briefly. Um, there's a course if you make themes and whatnot. There's a course which is free at the moment about the full site editing, which is going to be coming into WordPress core fairly soon, possibly December. So go and get that course if you make themes. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that one, but you can buy Genesis Pro as a separate thing now. It used to be a, uh, a Studio Press WP Engine collaboration only, but now you can buy it separately. Won't talk about that one if that's all right. I know that we're close to the end. Just, just so. talk about just going back to that one before the, it one. was last week. Yeah, it was last week. I don't. I, I wasn't able to attend. It was on last Thursday. Was the first event of that one. Yeah. The WP. Yeah. I, sh I should but, mention it, shouldn't I? I don't know why I went. So but it quickly. was. Um. It covers a lot. It covers exactly what we've just talked about when we were talking about things. How we are moving towards Gutenberg and how we are using it and how we're all having to find. Uh, different ways of using it and it's really good to see um um and the guys involved in that one it, i um who's who's on it um well there's uh mark, keith, mark wilkinson keith. and there's yeah. keith from uh he's in the wp and well uh yeah big orange diane. Heart group and diane. diane as well of course yeah mm. so go That's and great. get yourself onto really that. good really good really good that yeah. they're doing that i, I missed it yeah. last week but i'm hoping to i'm sorry see sorry to squeeze the time so, so much it's this, it's this discussion kind of a discussion from the perspective of theme developers to because from what i understand that a lot of the theme developers don't have a lot of input towards the gutenberg plugin in terms right. of the decisions i, I heard that it, yeah. they, there is like a, every two weeks there is a there's a, a, a slack meetup or something officially um but it's more of a reporting back to team theme developers to tell them this week's bad news that is going to break their themes as opposed to um, you know, we want your input because obviously we need theme developers in the future, sort of thing. So, is this what is this? I think what is I think that is the point. I think the point is to to try and corral people into a, a mutual understanding of what the state of, of play is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in that, I believe that. Excuse me, I've got a real frog in my throat. The it's difficult because the ground is moving constantly, and what was true yesterday might not be true tomorrow, kind of thing. And so these people have just decided to collaborate and teach themselves, uh, you know, gather yep. together a community and make some video tutorials about where we're at right now. Yeah. If you scroll just um, below that, like the way there's a good develop. There's a comment there just from uh, it, the, the, a theme developer said something along the lines of that one. Yeah, yeah. It's some, where's the bit about the moving? This target? is Keith. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, it's it was more target. like somebody going around in a in circles because it was Ross. 
Oh, I can't find it, but I'm sure you're right. It'll be on there somewhere. That was obviously yeah. There are so many issues like uh, no real backwards compatibility with Gutenberg because they're moving so fast, which is a thing which WordPress isn't used to. Uh, no real list of CSS classes, stuff like that. So it's mm. it's like uh, you have to keep on track because there is no source to go to, which is the class now, and is that changed or this? Um, it's the same well, thing like with generate blocks that they use their own widescreen version because uh, it's right. a little bit tricky with the building classes and stuff like that. So it's it's the right well, direction, but it's still early. What a segue. <laughs> what a segue. I was just going to segue straight like into generate when, blocks. Uh, you know, when, when there's like... It feels like theme developers are in a situation a bit like where you where there's like a forest fire and they, they move entire ecosystems of animals into into captivity where they can be survive where they can survive, but the animals don't really know what's happening, but they're still there. They're still alive. <laughs> Rescued from the forest, but the forest has gone down. Um it, it feels I like think, I think Paul's being has got, to must have got Disney Plus. So yeah, Paul Paul likes a good a good animal yeah. analogy. Paul must have, <laughs> must have <laughs> used this time to get a, a license Forever. at Disney Plus and be well, watching. That's a serious things. point. Sorry. <laughs> hey Leo, come on. You 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 went on to something about cars and transport. You I, know, know I, mean? I know. Allow I know. him give him some slack. I know. Slack. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but in, in in I think if there is a theme of everything we've discussed today, it is the fact that um, regardless of what people want, and this is the big thing, everything is moving towards the blocks. Everything is moving there. Things that we were used to doing don't happen, and we're going to find new ways of doing and new and different ways. Whether that's and it, and it relates to the fact that we're all moving in and out of offices and everything. We're in that. We're in a big turn turnover and turmoil area. Mm. That is really really exciting and can be really positive, and it was also quite frightening and scary uh sorry about that lee i think i just made some sort of involuntary farting sound out of my mouth whilst you were talking <laughs> oh, that didn't, uh, i don't that think any of us noticed actually no, didn't come across that. too loudly it was, it was mortally embarrassing for me i've gone red i was just just uh, it, there it was right. um right moving on generate blocks now mr lacy i imagine you're the best, yeah. best best person to talk about this but i i talked about it last week um, no, a couple of weeks ago, I had a play. I probably spent about two hours following the Mike Oliver tutorial that he put out in February on YouTube. I have to say, vast, vastly impressed with what Tom's built here. Really amazing. And the bottom line is, so is Justin. Uh, there's only one little caveat, and it was what you were saying about the the contain this full width container block, um, Bernard. But he seems yep. to really like it. Are you, are, have you, is there any part of you which is thinking, I'm going to drop my page builder and go with something like generate blocks and just go all in? Uh, first of all, I'm delighted that Justin Tadlock has written about it and really yep. likes it because I really like it. And um, I know how hard Tom Osborne has worked on this and also Mike Oliver, who did the video, and also uh, Matt Medeiros featured. Uh, this generate box oh, yeah. plugin on yeah. his plugin to it or the map report um, uh, just recently as well. So that was really cool to see that featured. Uh, Matt Maduros thought it was great as well. And um, to me, this isn't just a uh, plugin that you think is great. I think generate blocks is a bit of a game changer for the next couple of years for layouts um, within, within WordPress. Uh, only this morning. Um, myself and uh, one of the other guys in our team were talking about a particular client that we're onboarding at the moment. Um, a normal developer does everything with advanced custom fields and and a flexible content field for any, and with repeaters, if wow. anyone knows what that, what that means. It's, it's, and, it's messy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I did screenshot the entire edit page to show um, who I was talking to what this looks like for them as an editing experience. It used to be a really nice artisan way of doing things back in the day. But uh, we were discussing how we could change the way we built sites, um, for particularly for this client, to be at least closer to what their current developer who's going on maternity leave did. And we were saying that, well, you know, they don't really like giving the front end access to the page builders like what no normally we would with Beaver Builder. So maybe we could meet somewhere in the middle by creating blocks either with pipes right. or if it was ACF. It would be with ACF in this case because that's what they use. <laughs> use the um, <laughs> yeah. um, to, 
because to to use use ACF to create the blocks that they would normally use yeah. flexible content field for, and then use generate blocks to create the go between page builder feel, but with pre made blocks that were all pre styled on the front end. Nice. And if generate blocks didn't exist, we wouldn't have that idea. It just wouldn't be there. So. You know, because we I edited one site for this client uh, just last week, and all they wanted with their current setup was that they wanted another row, but instead of one video, there was a video with two columns. You know, right? A video here and a video here, and they just could not do it without writing PHP code and all that sort of stuff. And it just felt that, um, hey, if if you like the way of editing things in the back end for your clients because they have no control over design, it's all set rules, then generate blocks with ACF. Uh, custom, custom creative blocks could be an absolute winner for yeah. that. Um, and so, yeah, you know, we're thinking about for some of our clients that that is possibly a better solution than the page builder uh, clients, but not for all of them. Definitely for a lot of our clients, we like giving them the page builder. And I knew this day would come, though, right? I knew this this day would be on the horizon where serious people with serious businesses building serious websites would would start to question the the purpose of of you know the incumbent page builders for for simpler use cases you know we've got a client they just want to mess with fields they don't want to mess with the styling they don't want to have the ability to mess any of that up and here you are speak espousing it and it and this is oh, this is my preferred person? way of doing it yeah that's right you are a serious <laughs> person um this is my way of this no, would be yeah, my way of doing it serious thing it was so you know we're like how can we change the workflow with our existing tools yeah. And generate yeah. blocks was a get was a was a gateway to us being able to do that. Yeah, and it would have been a it's a better solution for them as well. If they it got quite a lot of comments that. um as yeah, well, he, but he, really he nice. Commented about the full with issue two. There's a comment further down with, yeah, from Chapin right and from uh, I don't oh, I can't remember the name. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's interesting. I mean, generate blocks is for sure the best way I have seen yet for structuring content because it's only a few blocks and it's it's more like like a page builder. You have your row and you can make columns and stuff like that and put stuff in there. The biggest issue always with handing that over to clients is they have no idea about mobile, they have no idea about whatever, and yeah. that's the current stage of Gutenberg is really can really really be messy. But I'm on Paul's side to use ACF pods, whatever for structured stuff. Uh, it's it's uh, and maybe temp see those blocks as templates and just reduce the number of blocks users can build. You can build out the fairly neat back end, I think, especially for newspaper style kind of attack attackers. Because yep. yeah, for the rest, it's still messy. I'm loving it. I'm really, really loving it. I'm very excited about what's going one more, on. There. One more thing on that front: the Please. particular designs that this person who we work with does are really complicated designs. They're not image left, text right, row, hero, banner. You know, gray, gray row, light. You know, white row, dark row, video in the middle. It's not that sort of stuff. This is really complicated um, design styles. And with a page builder, there's no way that you can achieve those without reverse engineering the output that you get. So in this use case for these quite complicated designs, the cleaner code of having your own blocks and then just writing the CSS for those pre-styled things, so they're like Bernard said, so that the client cannot get the mobile optimization wrong because it's all taken out of their hands. For that person's client type, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, which yeah, but is isn't correct. it the same if you make a custom module for Beaver Builder or a custom module for Elementor? I think it's easier with Beaver Builder, but that's another yeah, story. No, or yeah, you could make a custom module. You could make them. We the are same with a custom well. block. Where's the difference? I think um, I think that with the uh, with the custom blocks, you've got a lot less HTML to be dealing with there. So, especially on on a, a very complicated visual design i'm talking about all sorts of weird things all over the place it's very uh, artistic design style really cool but it would it would this this particular client has had lots of problems hiring other freelancers and agencies because they cannot handle the designs they just can't do yeah. it they, they take it on and they they just abandon the project and um 
So, so yeah, it, it, it works quite well, which is good because Gutenberg's direction has been very much aimed, it feels, at website owners and bloggers. And, and this, combined with some other techniques that we already know about, gives us an option for us who have clients who we want to make sure they're delivering a very good, very good, consistent visual experience to their customers rather than bloggers, stuff like that. So mm. I used to be on this very, very show getting more frustrated every single week with Gutenberg and the block editor. And <laughs> I'm starting to go completely in the other direction where I'm seeing the the, uh, the innovative world, the Tom yeah. Osborne's, you know, the pods team, the ACF teams doing things that are just going in yeah. totally the right direction. Absolutely. I'm quite excited about it now. Nice. Good. This is a good little project. Go check it out. Generate blocks um, is great. They're doing a pro this version is... as well. They're doing a yeah. pro version. I don't, I don't know oh, what's in oh, it. What? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold the, hold the phone. What? They're doing a pro. What's going to be added in? I don't know. I don't, Nobody I don't knows. Know. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just know that they're working hard on it. Right. And I think it's probably a reaction to the success that this has had within the community because yeah, 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 yeah. Very to generate for a Facebook group now, which I can't at the moment, obviously. But if you do go in there, <laughs> you'll see all sorts of little things like polls talking about, you know, for your next website, what are you using? And it's got all the list of page builders and the generate press massive, I'll call them the generate <laughs> press community. Um, because we're cool, you know, we're called the generate press massive, um, are shifting and they're really buying into it. That you know, they're I'm talking people switching from Elementor, from Beaver Builder, from whatever they're using to generate blocks. Watching Mike Oliver's videos and doing it that way, it's pretty, it's pretty astounding to be honest mm -hmm. to to see such an impact from a plugin like that. Now let's let's segue perfectly to this, which is Elementor's new thing. So two things here. First one, Elementor's it's come out of beta with two things. Uh, we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but now it's in the pro version of Elementor. You've got multi-step forms. I don't think I need to say anything else. It's multi-step forms, but it kind of feels to me almost as if Elementor's forms now are getting on par with uh, paid, paid for premium versions of forms plugins. It feels like they're almost at that point where why would you need another plugin for forms because the elemental one just does it but the thing that i'm interested in your opinion on is this stuff at the bottom um and it's called lottie let me find it no 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 it's a bit further down lottie animations right so stuff like this so i don't really understand this i haven't tried to implement it but there's now these incredibly complicated animations that you can do i mean there's a nice illustration of it there this is the kind of thing that i wouldn't dream of putting on a website but obviously a certain use case this is kind of fun cool anybody going to use this or is this just the sort of thing that it, it, it it's good advertising it you can do this look elementor does this but will anybody use these kind of animations or are we, oh, are sure. yeah good uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we've used Lossy Animations on a number of sites, including our own Dickie Birds website, uh, the Generate Press website, yeah. and a bunch of other ones as well. Um, you can't press a button and that thing happens like that. You have to actually create that animation. You have to craft these animations. And if you know how to craft these animations, getting them onto the page is the least of your worries. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but you can see the one that is um, is there on that Contact Me one. That's a stock um animation that you can purchase so apart from the elemental one that, that this one here with the little character using the phone tapping the foot so that's one that you can buy and if you if you just want to buy a plugin like that uh, an animation and drop it in your page then this will make things easier um in regards to the forms and the lottie stuff this is why to me elemental going in a SaaS direction just makes tons of sense for them because <laughs> every, every time they they add these new features they are um going away from what me and my team want from a from a page builder, which is light, and we can do the rest ourselves. So, I don't want to be installing Gravity Forms knowing that the page builder I've got has got a, an almost as good but not quite good enough form code built into it. That is just another thing that can go wrong next time the plugin is updated. So, brilliant for those people who want that. Great that it's probably going to a SaaS direction because. They are building everything you want inside a self-contained uh, product, and they're doing an absolutely amazing job of it. Um, you can't fault them for what they're doing. It's uh, it, yeah, it's, they're, they're, it's, they're, it's just not, it's just not what we want. 
at our level. They've got the uh, they've got the market by the um, by the by the throat, and they know what they. I mean, they just take loads of user feedback and build what their people want, and their people want this stuff, and I it's mean, working incredibly well for them. Sorry, I'm, I'm about to cover up your face, Paul. I do apologise okay. because Chris said lottiefiles.com is good to look at examples. Oh, it's like a marketplace, and you can change the colors and stuff before you mm -hmm. download them. Interesting, whole new world. Yeah, if you've ever downloaded Lord Icons from AppSumo, uh, Lord Icon, Lord Icons, then they Lord, used wasn't it? Lord, L-U-R-D? Yeah, yeah. So they're little hmm. icons with uh, animations. So if you want to use those, you're using you're using essentially Lottie animations. Um, but with Lord Icons or Lord Icons, whatever whatever it is that they're called, it comes with a plugin that makes it do the same kind of thing as, as what's going on here. So hmm. Elemental is doing a great job of putting something in that means that you don't need to add any code or a plugin to get your um, Lottie animation in there. The so, the Lerd icons have they've come out with an editor this week as well. I don't amazing. know, maybe it was last week. Not not massive, but you know you can amend colors and gradients and things like that. I think so. That's quite interesting. Sometimes it feels like Elementor is the new chat pack. <laughs> <laughs> Just to yeah yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, Ouch. So well, it's, it's a, <laughs> they're throwing more and more and more and more features, uh, which you might need to build out your site in there, uh, and and uh, that's it. And it's like, uh, I mean, I understand why they're going with it. Uh, I can't. I don't know how many paying customers they have because the free version is was five millions. So how many people actually pay for it? I think quite a lot is the answer. Um, and I know you can can use then the power pack or ultimate add-ons or whatever. You can have other stuff which extends it. So, do you need the pro version? How successful are they? I mean, they got a punch of of of, of capital, but uh, what's long term goal? Yeah, SaaS. I would SAS? imagine. I would imagine it's SaaS. I noticed that Leo's staying very quiet at this point. Is sort of presumably his anti-page builder posture. Is uh, is being is being loudly it's shouted different, by different. his silence. <laughs> it's just a different. There's there's things for different marketplaces, yeah. and for where I build and the sites I build, page builders don't make as much sense uh, because we're building large large size sites, and that typically isn't where they are. That said, I think um, large sites are going to move over to Gutenberg and are going to be using some of those elements there. Uh, and looking at a different approach, but uh, it will it will bring them together. I think it's, to me, everything like this just reminds me of uh, how the PC industry used to change and used to build your own stuff, and then eventually you would sit there and go, it's just not worth it. The fact that they're in bulking, putting these things in, um, and we're moving, as uh, Paul was saying and others were saying, to a SaaS environment, uh, Bernard was saying on this with Elementor, it makes a lot of sense because you're going to bring all these things together um, and make it maybe maybe the bespoke custom do it yourself at certain levels is just going to not not work out. And obviously the the big competitors in that will be the Square Spaces and the Wix, which are doing it already. Um, yeah. and they're they're going to be a big comp competitors. Yeah, uh, I can fully see Elementor though hitting the ground running with a ton of people already on board, just hitting with two million customers already I, I don't know it could be a real shock to people like squarespace i think because they've got a lot of people listen i'm going to go through uh, real quick sorry it's more like just, do you mind if one, i one, one, ah. like, uh, maybe it's not the wix which will get a surprise but the wordpress hosters when people using wordpress with elementor move to elementor yeah yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move very quickly because we spent ages. This is just to say that Sabrina Zaiden and I are starting a thing on Tuesday. Now, this is a WordPress plugin startup from zero to 10K. She's got this new – oh, sorry. Uh, she's got this new plugin called SpeedGuard, and sh she's hoping over a period of many weeks to illustrate how she got it from nothing to something and so that's what this is about it's not it's coming from a place of not knowing it's not like she knows i'm going to tell you everything that you need to know kind of course it's exactly the opposite it's all the mistakes that were made along the way <laughs> and the good things that were done along the way and the community hopefully helping her with suggestions uh we did a wp builds live with peacher this week so go check that out a couple of jobs i want to promote stratic 
to say that they've got a job for director of marketing. It's a remote job, although it says Jerusalem here, you can be anywhere in the world. But if you like, if you like creating content around hosting companies, they've got a job. Uh, go check that out. And also WP Mayor are looking for a React developer. And the last thing is a banner ad, apparently. No. Um, good grief. How many things can possibly get in the way on this website? Search Engine Journal. This just took my <laughs> breath away. 25 billion is the number that you were that was on the tip of everybody's tongues, I'm sure. If I ask the question, how many pages, spammy pages, does Google remove each and every day? The answer is 25 billion. <laughs> and this, this is one. Exactly. Yeah, it really is. Isn't that amazing? 25 billion that they have to get down. I can't remember the last time I went to Google, typed in something that I actually wanted to find. And it didn't give me what I wanted. Yeah, I, I wonder. I wonder how they quantify that figure. Um, what I, mean I think they just made is, it up. They just rolled the dice and then yeah, said, add, I, "Add a couple I, of zeros." I, I may be. I may be completely wrong, but I wonder if it's is it twenty five new pages or it's just that they keep marking the same pages. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, over and over again. Yeah, mark that one as on spammy, then spam it again tomorrow. Uh, twenty five sure. billion though, but search it. It's incredible. I like, honestly go just. As a thought experiment, go to Google and type in something pretty abstract, and I bet they get it right, which means that they must filter out a lot of crud each and every day. Uh, yeah, look, yeah. here we go. It's forum pages. That's what it is. That's right. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, what's interesting, it used to take you, if you had issues with SEO and you dropped off, it used to take you days and days and days to get back. It doesn't anymore. If you know, It, it is very dynamic these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you get your SEO right, you can change or get it wrong, you can move in both directions very quickly. Mm. I feel that we've used up too much of everybody's time. I'm awfully sorry we've gone on for far longer than we should have done. So I'm just going to wrap it up by saying thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for you three for being here present today. Anything happening that you want to talk about? We'll go around. Leo, anything happening this week? Uh, no. No, no, no. It's just been so much. I've been just doing live stream after live stream after live stream and live events. Uh, I know Sorry. we did to get a chance to talk about things. I know you talked about it last week about WordCamp Europe and other things. Um, you know, there's just a lot on at the moment. It's a yeah. lot on from this seat. Good. Yeah, it's nice that you get to do it all from the one seat. Though. You don't, like you said, you don't have to do the hour long commute. It's a, in many ways a pleasure, isn't it? Paul, what about you? Um, I don't know. I'll have Bernard. nothing to do with life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anything really paul nothing oh um oh probably uh i've got lots and lots of work to do this week um we're onboarding some new clients we've got a new team member and um we've also acquired a uh, a wordpress plugin so i'll definitely be um watching Ooh. some readers. Oh, yeah, oh, indeed. About that at the moment. um it was part of our plan for the future um when with all this covid19 stuff to uh, do something along those lines. So I'd be really interested to be checking out the show that you're doing, the series. Is it a series with Sabrina? It is. Like, we, we, uh, Sabrina, I have to say, Sabrina is the driving force behind all of this. Uh, she came to me with this suggestion, and then she padded it all out, and, and I'm just being the facilitator, really. So, um, yeah. So I don't know how long uh, it'll go on, but there's certainly, a, a, let's say, at least 10 episodes, which we're going to go through, but maybe more. We'll see. Yeah, well, there's lots of change going on in our company at the moment. All good stuff. So it's just going to be another week of transitioning to some new systems with new people and and all that kind of stuff. So nice and nice. busy. And then I'll just play some Nintendo Switch in the meantime and not tweet on Facebook for a week. <laughs> I, I'm going to watch this with very interested eyes. We'll see. Cool, how, see. see I'm predicting Thursday at the outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as he's getting. Bernard, what about you? Oh, uh, nothing special really going on. I just think I have talked far too much today. So I think <laughs> besides, please update pods because it's important for the people who are listening in later. Uh, security Fix and I think other plugins will follow. You can read it, at least a small hint on the issue. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks to everybody who made the effort to come. Really, really glad to have you with us. I'm going to put the banner up. I'm going to mute everybody and but ask you to stick around afterwards if you've got a minute or two. But I'll mute everybody and um, and put this little banner up and say bye. Bye. Have a nice week, everybody. Bye. Bye.